Um, I want to give my sincere appreciation and gratitude to the facilitators of this conference, uh, the Ottawa University and the Makaabe Group, uh, and the community of Ottawa. It's, it's indeed uh, wonderful to be here with you and uh, to see that Somalis and uh, uh, friends of Somalia are talking about peace and dialogue. And this is one uh, uh, of those, those events that promote peace and dialogue. So I'm glad to be part of you today. My topic today is not about politics, but it's about the diaspora's involvement in promoting peace and dialogue. And that's a, uh, a tall challenge, a tall order. And when we're talking about the diaspora, we're talking about Somalis outside of Somalia, uh, from uh, the Arabian Peninsula all the way to uh, North America, and how they have been able to promote peace and dialogue. What are some of the activities that we do, like this event today, that promotes peace and dialogue. So I will talk about uh, this issue. <coughs> Please feel free to share with your thoughts on this, because this is trying to show what you, all of us, have been doing for the past 17, 18 years in our own comfort zones, in our own homes, and how much influence do we have in Somalia, the politics of Somalia, and the livelihoods of Somalia. So if you would uh, bear with me, I will read from a prepared text that, that hopefully will uh, be able to engage in a few days later on. Uh, I will divide my topic into the, the involvement of Somalis at the individual level, at the clan level, at the organizational level, at the intellectual level, and the new development umbrella associations of, of Somali organizations. Somalis in the diaspora have been contributing to the financial, emotional, and moral well-being of their extended families, neighbors, friends, and community inside the country. It's estimated that the financial contribution of Somalis in the diaspora to Somalia annually surpasses, uh, in many estimates, the gross national product of the Somali national government uh, in the 1980s. It's estimated that over 25 to 40 percent of Somali families receive remittances, or hawaras as it's known, uh, from the diaspora communities. The gross dollars remitted annually is estimated between 700 million to a billion dollars. That's a large sum of money contributed by Somalis in the diaspora in the absence of the national government. And it's commendable. It is commendable. A World Bank study reviewing the implications of Somali diaspora's remittance and financial activities suggests that Diaspora financial contributions are a crucial source for providing basic social and human welfare uh, functions in so-called failed situations. This is the World Bank that is acknowledging the contributions of Somali uh, diaspora communities in supporting their families at the individual level. <coughs> the study highlights also, in the absence of government structures, resilient social urban structures such as the one displayed by the Somali communities in the diaspora and inside Somalia, create innovative ways of dealing with issues of community livelihoods and community development. So it's easy to say that, that Somali communities in the diaspora at the individual level have contributed immensely and positively to the livelihoods of their families in Somalia, who for the most part use these resources in addition to food and shelter, to pay for needed basic uh, school tuition, establish subsistence, small-scale trade, and businesses, and other uh, activities that improve the quality of life there. Even though families have the capacity to use some of these resources for non-peaceful activities, there's very little evidence where individual diaspora contributions are concerned have, con have contributed to the promotion of and the assessments of, of confidence in society. At the Quran group in Lebanon, Somalis in the diaspora are not only individuals, but are also Quran members. And we will discuss this issue a little bit further here. The social structure of Somalia is a very complex one to say the least and to describe here. And the maintenance of the Somali Quran identity in the diaspora remains alive and well. We, after all, are members of Quran identities whether we want to accept or not. As such, many Somalis contribute morally and financially to the immediate and short-term causes of Quran community uh, organizations inside and outside the country. These Quran causes, or Quran projects, if we 
can be divided into the following. A peaceful cause, one which can leadership needs resources to undertake community interests and to promote interplan and interplan peace and dialogue and to enhance capacity to engage peace, regional and international level. Another peace uh, 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 cause is to develop small scale developmental projects at the clan community level. These include building uh, schools, renovating schools, uh, hospitals, and what have, what have you, uh, in different cities and communities, collected through the clan structure in the diaspora. And third, and the most important uh, issue here, is the non peaceful causes for clan contributions. These are the, the violent ones, in which clan leadership raises necessary resources to acquire ammunition and logistics to either wage a war or defend the clan from other invading clans. Uh, these resources are generally collected from uh, Somalis in the diaspora who are members of the clan and who are willing to pay their share or sometimes are forced and are fearful of the reprisals from their clan community members. So one way or the other, willingly or unwillingly, Somalis in the diaspora contribute to uh, clan uh, uh, developments uh, in, the, in the neighboring sense. Uh, so even violent uh, uh, causes or, or, or uh, purposes here for, for invading clans, they can use persuasive means to tell to the community that we are not really taking this, these resources to invade the community, but we are defending the honor and the territorial integrity of our clan by defending our own community. So resources are collected there more easily from those who are not willing to support it because it's not directly invading other communities, but it's protecting the dignity and the moral standing of, of the clan uh, uh, staff. So these are um, the individual level contributions as well as the clan level uh, contributions. In the diaspora, we also have organizations. Diaspora-based Somali organizations, by and large, contribute positively to the promotion of peace and dialogue in, the, in their communities in Somalia. These organizations focus on political, social, cultural, religious, and environmental issues affecting Somalia. It's commendable to see the crucial role played by diaspora organizations in collecting, maintaining, and promoting important national issues in the absence of 